Yo, what's up, guys? Are we on? We're live. Where are we? <laughs> it's only us three today. This place keeps changing every time we come here. I know. Took a lot of work. You didn't come and help. Thank God, because I'm not really proud of what you guys did so far. I mean, this well, thing here looks like a, a mess so far. I don't know. Be come better on. change. Come on, it can't be worse than before. I mean, it can't be worse than before. Uh, it was beautiful what we had before. <laughs> no, it wasn't. But people saw the reflection on the background. The reflection of the background. The so, reflection is not that important. It's what you say that's important, right or wrong? Wow. Yes well said. No. Yes You're a no. poet. So the thing is, the people are not seeing the full thing yet. I mm. thought we were going to debut it today. And then the problem is, Peter had his surgery. He's doing well, by the way, for everybody that was sending love to That's Peter. Right. He's walking, but he can't sit for too long yet. And mm -hmm. then my dad was supposed to come, and he pulls out last time, last <laughs> second. He always does what that. What was the reason? You know why? Why? He said, I got to go meet Marco Tardelli. Ooh. Oh, yeah, ooh. Ooh. He, he insulted me. He said, do you know who that is? He didn't think I knew who Marco Tardelli was. You probably don't even know. He scored in 1982 okay, World Cup, no? Right. He coached Northern right. Ireland, no? <laughs> okay. No, that was uh, well, that was uh, Trapattoni. He actually coached Inter too, believe it or not. Yeah, he, I don't know. You got to check. I don't think he coached Ireland. Trapattoni no, coached Trapattoni Ireland. Trapattoni did coach Ireland. So Tardelli did it? No, no, I don't think never. so. I don't remember him as a coach. We I know the Trapattoni. iconic celebration that he did. Oh, yeah. That's what I remember. Obviously, I wasn't born then, but... Running. You were not born by then? No, it was 82. Oh, my God. Yeah, you I'm 95. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. You can look kind of old. I said, that you, you probably, I said, hey, thanks. Somebody of your age has probably been there. <laughs> I like my friends. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, I'm here yeah, alone Republic on my side. Republic of Ireland. Sorry, I said Northern. Uh, but was it Tardelli? Yes. Tardelli. Yeah. Not Trapattoni. Marco Tardelli. You want to say wow. For a few months, maybe. No, oh, was not much. eight. Wow. 2008 till the uh, 2013. It cannot be, my <laughs> Here, man. I want to see. Of, yeah, let me see. Oh, look at it. You guys don't believe don't me. Why this. would I lie? Wow, I don't remember this but at all. The line that was never in any competition anyway. I think he was too, yeah. Okay, that's who I always remember. Mm. Uh, anyway, guys, we had uh, a lot of things happen this weekend in the Serie A. Shall we start from uh, the Derby? Derby della Capitale? Oh, There's a so. lot to talk about. I think so. My gosh, has Daniele De Rossi... Not, not just been impressive, because we said he was impressive. The stats show how impressive he was in his 11 games in charge in Serie A. The, he only has one loss, and that was to Inter, which we all said it can happen. They didn't have a great performance against Lecce, but either way, they didn't lose. But then this game, where in the last four occasions that they played this derby, they didn't score a goal, and they didn't have a win under Jose Mourinho. The last time was 2022. The attitude, the spirit, the way that they approach this game was how Roma is supposed to play this game. And it's not just the energy and the passion, but even tactically, the way that they played the first half and then in the second half, they looked to try and score the second goal, but then they learned that they needed to manage the game towards the end. There's so many amazing things that we could say about De Rossi. I have a few, but I'll pass it to you guys first. What did you think about the match? Are you I was just going to say... Uh, I. Uh... I thought overall it was a cagey match. I think Lazio started off well, and they couldn't build upon their performance. And I feel like Roma really grew into the match. Uh, they weathered the storm of Lazio. They ended up scoring the goal for Mancini after... Uh, I forgot who it was, what Lazio center back was, but it hit it out for a pointless corner kick when he, he spliced it and it went out for a corner, which resulted in the Mancini... Uh, header goal, which no one was marking him, and they ended up being on the scoreboard 1-0. But it did seem like it was that going to be that 0-0 goal is kind of draw. But in this, on these derby matches, it's those fine details that count. One little mistake here, one little thing here, whoever capitalized. And that's what it was at the end of the day because there wasn't really many chances. There was a lot of anger. There was a lot of fights. There was a lot of passion, a lot of pushing, a lot of tension. But at the end of the day, they got the goal. Other than the second half, they just made sure Lazio did not get back in the game. But actually, I know, well. I know you're saying the fights, which it always happens at the yeah. De La Capitale. It's always like that. I actually felt like uh, because of De Rossi's attitude and the way that he coaches, teams are a reflection of their coach, right? When Jose Mourinho was there, yeah, they were intense. Sure. They wanted to fight. They made it a, an absolute battle. I felt like with Roma, they were more mature. Like, they were smart. They were clever. Like, the way that they sought out the game. It wasn't how they used to be in the database, which was a little bit reckless. 
maybe is the proper word. And which is another thing that I think De Rossi is bringing to this side. You don't agree? I'm not, not that I don't agree, but uh, there was instances where the Ganduzi, Dybala thing, there were Yeah, but they weren't risking, faces. they weren't risking to get sent off. Um, not risking, a, no, no, I wouldn't say up to that, but there was definitely uh, getting people, uh, getting each other's faces. I feel like that's a, uh, that's a regular thing at the end of the day. I right? don't know. I saw some some difference. Uh, let me just say something. People comment if you, 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 know, if you think I'm right or wrong. The game, you see De Rossi and uh, and uh, what's his name and Tudor, uh, you know, exchange pleasantries. You know, yeah, the, the usual. Uh, yeah, whatever. I don't know, know if they actually mean it to be that, that, that nice to each yeah. other, but they actually do. Okay. But uh, like uh, Marco said before, that was the fight. That was the intensity. But it was uh, from the Roma side. It was a smart. And intelligent intensity. In other words, be nasty. Don't get caught and don't get and don't get yellow. In other words, don't get yourself being carried out with uh, your uh, uh, emotion. Because at the end of the day, bringing the the uh, the, the results back uh, back home with the three points is what counts the most. Yeah. Number one, I agree number with that. Two, and number two, it's limiting the damage in terms of uh, you know uh, uh, red cards or yellow cards or uh, or uh, you know injuries or, 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 or all of the above. So uh, I think that. Uh, De Rossi has injected a lot of intelligence into this team, mm -hmm. and um, but uh, as Marco was saying before, the intensity and the 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 the, the anger for the game is there. You know, yeah, it always they, is. I just no, 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 I don't. No. The last four, the last derbies, no, they were total my. domination from Lazio. Roma. I haven't seen this spirit from them. Roma, they took over the so game. So you're saying straight mm -hmm. from Roma? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this was a yeah. Roma. This and was a, a Roma deal. You know, so, you know what the thing is with De Rossi remember, too. Yeah. It. I listen to his post-match uh, comments, and if you speak Italian, I highly urge anybody to listen to the way that he communicates because there's nobody in Serie A that does. And communication is a small part of the job, but it's to me, part, I, think. I think it's very important it's the way that job. you're the leader of an organization. You should speak uh, the proper way, and that's yeah. one of the things I don't like about Allegri, but I'm focusing on De Rossi. De Rossi is so humble that I'm actually annoyed at how humble he is. He was speaking after the match. I get I get chills just thinking about this because he's such a young coach yet he's bright beyond his years, and he's they kept telling him, Daniele, this is this is you like you did this to the team. He's like, nope, nope, it's my team, it's my players, and he's solely put the focus on his players, and they kept pushing him, and he doesn't want to take any of the credit for anything that he's done. And there was a beautiful moment. I don't know if you guys caught this. They had the image of him celebrating like crazy, and he goes into the locker room. That's so they, right. So they asked him. They That's said, right. usually after the match, they go underneath the curva, and obviously all the players did. So they asked him, why'd you do that? He said, because this was not my win. I want my players to have the spotlight. They're the ones that won the game. Guys, what coach, and I love Jose Mourinho, I will be the last person I respect everything that Mourinho did, but this is something special. To not put any of the focus on yourself and to say empower your players, where Mourinho most of the time he's talking about upon himself, he, negative, on himself, negative, but he also, positivity but he also spoke time. badly about a lot of his players, the, right? That also is the kind of coach that would take no credit for all the accomplishments and take all the blame for the negative stuff. That's just who the per just that's just how he is we kind of that's just, not normal though it's not normal but he's just we didn't really see that of him as a player but now we're seeing a different side of him even if you didn't if you didn't think you can like a person mm. uh, that also more mm. you there, there's a way the way he's a coach now just a d different dimension and tactic and ta like all of that's great but it doesn't really matter unless you're getting results exactly. and you're you're playing better football yeah. so it's all of those things and the thing that he's shown us as well is that you can go forward you can attack while also also maintaining good defense because they got three shutouts in a row so it's not that you have to just bunker in put the five three two stop them from playing if you play football you could actually defend better let me just say something that sticks with, with me all the time when I see Roma playing lately uh, is uh, every time that the, the Roma scores or something very important happened to the to the game or something like that, the player, they go to embrace the coach. In other words, they're fully behind 1,000% yeah. of the Rossi, whether for it's going to be a, a goal, whether it's going to be, a, a, you know, the end of the game. It's just uh, the Rossi, it's a, a, the major, major, major reasons why this Roma it's going 12 cylinder at the same time. For and sure. they're getting Tammy Abraham came back for the you first see, time in 306 days. Smalling, Smalling made his debut. So things are looking up. We're going to preview the Europa League. A couple other things to talk about for this uh, derby. Lazio looked uh, obviously extremely poor. I think that we also need to remember for Tudor, he's had three games, one win, one loss to Juventus, and now this loss in the derby. Uh, he'll be frozen on it also. Three oh. two. You're thinking of the Coppa Italia. 
Yes, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. But two daughters has come in, and Lazio have a lot of missing players. Yeah. Uh, Provedel, Lazzari, Rovella, Zaccagni. So he played Philippe Anderson out wide, but he's one of your most creative players. I didn't like Kamada playing in that position. So it's going to take time, and I think Lazio is a me- they not able to score goals, cheat and mobile, blah, blah, blah. The last thing I wanted to bring up about this match um, was after the game, Mancini. He's in a, a little bit of hot water because of what he did. Basically, he went after the match and he started waving a flag that had the Lazio colors and it had a rat on it. <laughs> Why that <laughs> Why face? I didn't see that. Yeah. I didn't see that. I'm surprised. Usually, you're very up to date on usually this I kind got of thing. Zeta. You're usually the first one there. He apologized Can saying... You show it to me? Is that all on social media? Mike, you want to show us? Yeah. Show him. Uh, it's on our Twitter. So He took a Lazio flag from somebody else. From a yeah, fan. From a rat yeah, from it a had a rat on it. He says that he didn't see it. I mean, I don't, oh, I don't know how you don't right. see it. I but, knew that Mancini was an instigator, but I didn't think it was going to go. Yo, Mancini is something else, but he, that guy is crazy. Is it bad that I, it actually kind of makes he's, me like him he's more? He's the kind of player you want on a, your team, but yeah. hate to play against. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. So, so he did this, and then he apologized after saying that he didn't realize it was on it. But a lot of Italian journalists uh, went after him. I want to get your guys' take on it. I, If you've watched this podcast for some time, mm-hmm. I'm usually I'm very lenient on competition. I think that when you lose, you should just suck it up and there's no problems. Like when Argentina was getting all the controversy about the penalty kicks and the way that they responded, I never saw a problem with it. That's me personally. So I don't have a big deal with him doing this. Oh no, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. There's no way you didn't see that. Really. Do you guys think doing the flag to begin with? Like a fan. Of, um, sure. oh, Do you guys think this is offensive that he did this? Is it too much? I think I have to banter. I think it makes the game better. Not really, I see not more. Really. First of all, it would be more offensive if Lazio would be playing at home. But Roma playing, being the, the, the home team for that thing, I guess it, it was a, a way to rub it in a little bit yeah. more because uh, those are the, the games that, regardless of their standing into the, right. into the Serie A, uh, yeah. Nella Classifica, this is the things that the two teams are looking forward to to uh, yeah. to have a bragging rights. So uh, it's, it's, for I me, it's part of the bad. He's not hurting anybody. No, no, I, to be honest, not. I feel like it adds more to the game. Everyone gets more. Oh, did you see you, what he did? You know, I feel like it just adds more. You know what I enjoy the most? I was uh, I, I enjoy the Bala showing uh, the shin guards. With yeah, I was going to explain Oh, that. my God. So, I said to myself, I didn't realize so, until after the yeah. game. So, for the people that don't know, uh, Ganduzi and Dybala actually got in each other's faces. And a lot of people actually still don't know about it. But Dybala took off, uh, lowered his sock, took his shin guard, and showed it to Ganduzi, who's French. And he got called up for France. And he showed him Dybala lifting the World Cup trophy, and he shushed him. And I was like, oh, my God. When I found out Marco's the one that sent a message, I was like, no way he did that. Pa- I, Poppy I actually noticed around. it. Poppy oh, noticed it. Poppy, Poppy in, the, in the studio. She I goes, like, she goes, did he just show him because he's Argentinian? And we were all like, wow. This is another thing that I love. Like, people yeah, getting mad so about this. To, I, I was so on. much when I, when I found out about it, I was like, no way. That's so cool. I thought it was Absolutely. hilarious. The soccer is not that wrong. Those episodes yeah. would be very yeah. boring. We need that. We need fight. He's not hurting. No, we, well, I, not listen. Fights. We, I to, could you imagine how if you were banter. just like you, Mike, I say you're an instigator. I'm not <laughs> an instigator. Mike is the number one but instigator. Oh, big time. What would how could you imagine how I mad the same way? No, no. If you were Ganduzi, how mad? I can't be oh mad about anything. God. You play awful. Um, you have Ganduzi nothing to say back. Ganduzi was probably the best Lazio player. But in general, fair. Lazio, there's nothing yeah. Lazio could complain about. But how mad would you be? You're already mad in just face. You're losing, mm. and he showed you the like. Also, just people lost people were writing. Dybala, you played six, 17 minutes in the World Cup. He scored a goal, and then you know what? Yeah, he scored the penalty, he scored right? A penalty, man. But you know what I was saying? Ganduzi you know, got zero make, minutes. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. When uh, Italy played England, we make fun of our English friends, and we're, we're we don't even play the game. You still make fun of it because you have pride in your country. Absolutely. So just for the what the people are saying, yeah. but actually. Dybala started the fight, though, to be yeah. honest. Well, Coming from Dybala, I wasn't expecting something like that. Dybala is the only... Yeah, he, he actually... He's the one that just stays on the back all the time. I, and, and I thought that, Gwendusi was the one that went up to him and just grabbed his neck unprovoked. Yeah. But it was actually Dybala who went up to him first. If you see a different yeah, angle... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could... You could I like that. that. What, what I didn't happened? know that Dybala was a little... They, a little they went for, it went for a corner kick. Um, It went out to the sideline, and there was like a slide tackle. I don't know. Maybe Dybala went too hard into the challenge, and Dybala went to Gwendusi first, and he he put his hands on him first, and then Gwendusi responded by grabbing him. 
Yeah, like yeah. the back of his it all, it all, afro. All ended there. <laughs> he has a lot of hair to grab too. I just want to say, if these players were mic'd, I would not miss oh a God. second, not even a second that would be great content. of this game. Why don't we? Do I would that? eat it up. We don't have the spectacle enough. Hopefully, bef- in our, enough. hopefully in our uh, in our lifetime, we're gonna see yeah. at least a couple of mic'd up uh, games. I would love that. Guys, before we move on to the next game, uh, you can see we're all wearing hats. These are the new hats that we're going to release in about two weeks' time. They, they're really nice. You We're prepared. You're telling me they cannot, they cannot order the hats right away? In two weeks. Oh, in two in weeks. weeks. But so get ready. the ability, the, the, the thing that we're doing is you could sign up for our, our mailing list mm-hmm. and our newsletter. newsletter. And uh, it's the top uh, top link in the description. And you'll find out early. So you'll be able to get them because we have limited qualities yes. quantities. These are for the Euros that are coming up or Italy. And we have a couple other really cool pieces of merch that are going to drop for the Euros. We've been working on these for months. Maybe months, we, months, we, months. We, well, not you. Oh, not me. He's part of it. But you. be ready. Help support us. I'm also wearing hey, I'm something. wearing the what's joggers the, that we have available list? right now. What are you going to get on the mailing list? So you, you sign up for you get every you get a lot of You perks. get an email or you get yeah. a personal mail? So you get an email. email one says when uh, new merch is coming out, you can be the first one before it hits the public. Ah. So there's a lot of So you cool get perks. some privilege if you sign it to the Absolutely. mailing list. You, you get notified before you pay the general for, uh, public. No, it's free. It's free. Guys, well, if it's free, it's for me. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, we have other merch on ItalianFootballTV.com. Yeah. Help show your support. Go check out what we've got. We've got some sweats. These are such comfy joggers. And now I've been wearing the shorts a lot lately. I didn't like right. the shorts at first, but now that the weather's I getting a little them. bit nice. Yeah. It's, How come I like, don't have a pair of shorts yet? I've because never I, seen I you wear shorts. I didn't, I didn't subscribe to have the mailing list. Have you seen list. with shorts? Hey, by the way, what I'm holding here is uh, courtesy of Dean Kimenti, our uh, a substitute producer is a like very good. I like the full government name. Michael Jean. Yeah, yeah. Made espresso yeah, martinis. Yeah, he's yeah, a bartender. Man, he's the king. He's at Gino's. The king. Dean, Dean, the Shout out Gino's Bay Ridge. <laughs> hey guys, uh, Gino, no hey, why, what's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys no hey, hey, Gene, so you see, we're doing a, a lot of a lot of freebie commercial for you. So when we come in free. over there. We're going to send them an invoice. Oh, we're going to send you an invoice. Okay, I'm sorry. I take it back. Okay, that's right. Yo, let's uh let's move on to crazy. some more controversy. <laughs> Since you said you like uh banter, we had Cassano versus Leao today on uh, social media. He doesn't know, right? He does know. Oh, yeah, damn. of course. He's he's up to date on Cassano news. Mm. I'm gonna read the quote from Cassano, where I believe it's Domenica Sportiva mm. that he's on, and he said, Leao's problem is that he thinks he's a phenomenon. He's a good player that has great physical strength. That's it. 10 to 15 years ago, he would not even be able to play for a team fighting 6th to 7th place. He also said other stuff. I just condensed the quote. And then Lao uh, responded by quote tweeting seven clown emojis for Antonio Cassano, who this is not the first time that he's gone after him. Now, we know for the people at home, Antonio is deeply invested into Antonio Cassano because put your... Put yourself in Antonio's shoes. Cassano comes from the same exact town that Antonio comes from. Antonio used to watch Cassano when he used to play in uh, in Bari Vecchia. Mm -hmm. You said he used to play in the streets. He's Antonio's favorite player. He even made Bleacher Report one time because he said that Cassano is better than Messi. With all that being said, go to the doctor. what What team are you on? Okay, listen, first of all, it's not the first time that I'm actually not repeating or retweeting because I don't have Twitter and I don't have Instagram. You I do have am Instagram. Actually, I don't, well, it says it's IFTV Antonio. At IFTV Antonio, but it's not uh, me managing, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, it is actually fortunately and unfortunately because uh, it's work that I don't have to do and I have to put my trust in those two uh, guys. But uh, I'm not because, running it. Are you running it, Mike? Uh, I think it's you. <laughs> as far as Antonio Cassano, yeah. uh, you know, coming on layout, we are pretty much on the same page. I've been saying exactly the same thing. Okay? It's not clinical enough. It's not a champion. I think he needs to get over himself and needs to show more. Eight goals, eight goals in a, in a campionato that a, Antonio Cassano doesn't repute the ex, the ex, one at the top. I mean, I'm He not, didn't just say that. I'm he a, said, he basically said a joke league. Well, I it, only that that detail I found myself to disagree with him a little bit because Serie A is Serie A. You know, he we have think a, so. we have a lot of teams fighting for the champ. I mean, not not anymore, but uh, we had up to last couple for of Champions weeks. League, yeah. We had the Champions League. Now we still in the Euro League. We are we are all over the places. But but as far as Cassano comments on Cassano, I'm not saying that they're spot on, but they they're not they're not too far. Cause I mean, Mike. Leao needs to needs to just put numbers 
that they're very meaningful. Can I tell you one number? Yeah. One stat. In 2024, yeah. no Serie A player has been involved in more goals than Rafael Leao. Who cares in all being involved? You have the score. Being that, no, no, that's what it is. It goals and assists. Yeah, but that doesn't That's combined mean goals and assists. not good enough. It's good from okay. far, but far from good. Mike, okay? what's your reaction? That's ridiculous. Come, I mean, come on. I bro. expect you more for somebody. What's your reaction? Like you, uh, react, Mike. React. I know you always like Hassan on this, but you're ridiculous for his ridiculous take. Without Leal, how many points does that guy get? How much stuff does he do? Yes, you can find little nuances that he doesn't, but who's perfect at the end of the day? Who's perfect at Milan? My thing is, who's saying that, that Leal, Leal, who's so putting talented. these standards that he's world-class? For me, it's very clear. Leal is a great player. He's not a world-class player. World-class means you could walk into any team. Oh. He's not Vinicius he's very Jr. Few. He's, Mbappe, not, he's not Alan. Mbappe. He's, oh. he's, he's not Lautaro. He's below. He's tried to compare him with, with I don't. I don't, said, know. See what I don't know if I agree with that. Inter. Can you say that Leao does exactly the, 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 the intensity that Lautaro brings into I would the say, game of Inter? I would say Leao is as important to Milan as, as Lautaro is to Inter. Forget about it, the importance. It's what you well, you're comparing two game. different players now. One's a winger and one's a striker. Yeah, he's supposed to score a lot more goals. That part I don't agree with. Lautaro is a leader. Okay, Lautaro shows by example. Nobody said that until nobody said that until doing. this year when he got the captain's armband. But why armband. are we putting all these marks on exactly. him as if Leal came out and said he's the next best you know, thing? I you don't know understand. The exactly. Exactly. I agree, Mike. Teo Hernandez is a leader. He, I consider yeah. him but a one, leader. One doesn't, when he to, wants to one doesn't equal Wait the other. Let, let me just explain the reasons why. A leader, but you don't need to explain. Nobody said he's a leader, though. Okay. Who's saying he's a leader? Yeah, but you, he's but a very good player. But you guys are making Leao. You are creating this this uh, superstar that he has not matured to become a superstar yet. Yes. Does he have the I, potential? Absolutely. So we're, 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 we're on the same page. We're in complete agreement. We're on the same okay. page. Because you know why? A player that's a superstar does it week in and week out. A player that's a superstar is way more clinical. It doesn't mean that every single game, but most games. And there's a lot of uh, things with Lau where he's up and down and he's in front of goal. But that's to say that the quality that he has, the ball at his feet, it's extreme. He just, we wish he could show it every single day. But then, I'm sorry to tell you, if he did do that, he would not be playing for yeah. Milan. He'd be playing for Real Madrid. Or Inter. Well, why are you saying that? Because it's true. Because unfortunately, the one true thing that Cassano well, because says. Because AC Milan, it's not, they, they, they don't have that. Not, not even a Milan thing. I'm saying Italy in general. League. Italy in general, it's not a league that could have a player like Mbappe or Jude Bellingham or uh, De Bruyne. I'm, when you're talking about just like the, the best, the it's best. True. It's hard to say that about Italian football. If we're honest, and I love Italian football. Except Inter, like I said. Inter would be the only case that you can argue. Such as, for example, what, what are the best players in, in Inter that... Uh, Do I have what, to tell you? Yeah, who? I have to tell Besides you that? Without Lautaro, who else? Barella's now? Oh, Barella, yes. Barella, yes. That's Bastoni? It. No, but I'm just, no, I'm just no, saying... Marco? No. no. <laughs> he almost knocked his hat off. Get up, no, Marco! No no, no. no? No. Yeah, okay. We'll see. We'll, okay. we'll read the comments Sorry. after. And we'll, we'll, we'll read the Sorry. comments. One, one last um, Milan topic um, I have. I think, I think the people are watching what we say on our podcast. Mm -hmm. Because last week, we put the title of our video, and we got heavily criticized for this. We put the title of our video, Christian Pulisic is the best signing of the summer. And people say, oh, you guys are biased, Milan, American, blah, blah, blah. Today, Corriere dello Sport put Milan is the best signing. And then on top of that, Fabio Caressa, who is the legend, I love Fabio Caressa. He, for the people that don't know, if you remember Goldie Grosso, Goldie Grosso, commentator, the golden commentator. commentator in Sky, but also just the way that he interprets the game in Serie A. I, I think in general football, the way that he sees it, he sees it beyond just the pitch. Um, he said he was the best signing of the year. So I think we are the gurus, Antonio. That's right. That's right. Me out. That's right. Even though you never, even though you never said that he was the best signing. Uh, I didn't say that literally, but uh, I, you know how much I like Pulisic and how much I, li how much I like to meet him. And hopefully, I'm going to be meeting him uh, very soon. Oh, we got here uh, the producer. And uh, the, uh, by the way, guys, you missed out on uh, on uh, the coffee, Martini coffee. What do you call Espresso it? Espresso Martini. Espresso Martini. <laughs> Hello, Martin Anto. Coffee. Pulisic Woo. scored again. Yes, and beautiful, he's beautiful he's got goal. more goals in the league than he's ever had in his entire career. Ten beautiful, goals. Beautiful. He's been so and involved. What kind of a goal did he score? Beautiful goal. Beautiful tiragiro di sinistro. Yeah. How can you how can you expect more from somebody like that? Th and you know what? Let me finish. He meant it to put it right there yeah, where the course. ball 
end it. And the thing that I love is um, a lot of the quotes where uh, I spoke to a lot of American fans who had question marks around Christian Pulisic because in the last uh, Campeonato, he only had three goal involvements with Chelsea. I think first and foremost, Christian being healthy is the biggest thing because the qualities you can't dispute, but it's also, he's so happy in Milan. And he says, I spoke to Pioli before joining. Pioli kept his promise. He put me at the center of his game. He's playing me in a position that I like. He's tactically, he's in a specific role, but he also does have freedom. And that he's, his dad said he's loving life in Milan. He's, his, his career is reborn now at AC Milan. And the fact that he's also the gateway that allows a lot of American fans to, you know, enjoy the league that we love. I'm so happy with Pulisic. None of it would matter. Like that part, the marketing part and getting more eyeballs and Serie A wouldn't matter if he wasn't a great player. So the fact that we have both is something special, I think. You know, 100% in agreement, but I want to add to Pulisic the importance of the goal that Giroud has scored up to now mm. for AC Milan. And I just hope all of those rumors that Giroud is coming to MLS, they're not true. Because uh, they're I definitely think true. They're not. They are. No, it's how. Oh, God. I just hope that Giroud. <laughs> He's 38, out though. Win him off. <laughs> let, him, let him do what he wants. He's no, got to no, decide no, what he no. wants. He has his birth certificate. He's going to tell you something else. Giroud belongs in the Serie A. He brings the level of Serie A much higher than if it were, it were... But let him get his move to MLS. He wants Why? to go. He Why? wants get to go to money. LA. He's going to make a lot of money. money. At least one more year. Just give him what are you one more If anybody, Cardinal, if you're listening to me, I do not extend. I don't think I don't think it's a Milan thing. I think it's Giroud. Giroud he feels like he's ready. Yeah. He's going to go out on top. Ibra, if you're listening to What's this, go in do? a locker room and try to talk him out because uh, he's a champion. To me, he's the champion that AC Milan... It's a, the, the DNA. It's this guy's the, the DNA of AC Milan. A lot more than Leao. You know what's funny? It's uh, I feel like Giroud. We said it on the last podcast, but he helps so many of the the guys around him, like the Leaos, uh, RLC, Pulisic, and now also Chukweze, who Pioli played the front four, right? And we thought Chukweze has not impressed me at all from the start of the season. And the last couple games, he's coming alive. And Pioli said he put his head down. He started working really hard. He knew that it was going to be tough for him. But the fact that you got him, especially going into the Europa League against Roma, which is a 50-50 battle in my eyes, or maybe mm, Milan, Milan, Milan slightly. 64, I say. 60? Yes. Yeah, I, I'll say 55-45 with what? for Milan for, against Roma. Percentage. What do you oh, think? No, Just because no. the quality of players that no, Milan has. 65 Milan, 35 Roma. No, you're now you're discounting. 65-35. Okay, well, I disagree. <laughs> All of that <laughs> to be said, that it's great that you have the option off the bench. Yeah. RLC is gonna play where he wants because he's just been amazing. He's got 10 goals, all comps. Nine of them came in 2024. But the fact that you have that is a good problem. So you you really favor Milan yeah. against Roma yeah. on Thursday? You know why? Because the attacking style that Roma is playing is going gonna, is gonna to open the space for AC Milan. AC Milan has got speed on the wings. He's got a tremendous midfield. We got Ben Asser. We got... Uh, oddly. Yeah, we oddly to me. But what about your defense? You have the same problem. Not really. Not really. Look, if Gabbia... Gabbia plays the center defender and Tomori plays the center defender. We have three out of four. We are in top shape. We are in top shape. The only one is the right, the right defender, whether it's going to be Calabria, whether it's going to be, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, um, Florenzi. I like what we have right now. I like it a lot. I wouldn't Actually, discount Roma. I think you're, you're overlooking Roma so. too much. I don't think so. 35% is not enough for a team that's on a high right now. And for a team that's got a coach that they're absolutely loving. And also, I, I mentioned it before, Tammy's coming back. Smalling's coming back. Roma is not going to be able to play the 3-5-2 that he always said. Uh, they don't play 3-5-2 anymore. They What's play 4-3-3. 4-3-3, yeah. With De Rossi. Whether it's 4-3-3, whether it's 3-5-2, it's not going to work. Believe me. Because they're going to be worrying. Why do you, why do you favor? You're usually They're going to be worrying about Milan, AC Milan's Milan speed. And imp, you know, the, AC Milan goes vertical too. I think they, uh, they use the wings, yes, but... Uh, they just go over the top. Adley is going to be the is going to be the killer on this game here. Me, if Adley let you know, if they I never let him expected play, those words to come out of your mouth. They let him play. He loves Adley, man. Oh, I love. Are you related him. to Adley? No, but if they let him play, do you want to be? <laughs> it, no. Okay. But if they let him play his style of soccer, mm. Adley is going to be the different maker. Actually, I will. See, I like to see Benasser behind Adley in, instead of Adley just being the playmaker in front of the defense. I want to see Benasser playing on the back and Adley just uh, be the, mm. the fantasista, mm -hmm. just being the number ten. Mm. You know, if Love to Chick plays, fine. He's got to start. He's going to start? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. He's been too good. Well, listen, listen. 
I do not want Adley to be coming from, uh, you know, uh, just spending only 20 minutes on the field. Uh -huh. Adley can just make uh, the difference. Okay. We spoke a lot about Milan and Roma so far in this podcast, a topic that will make Juventus fans very happy. Obviously, they're starting to get the results again. Coppa Italia 2-0 against Fiorentina. It was a good first half from them, and then the second half was uh, was scary. And uh, I think Wojtek Szczesny absolutely saved them. With They only had 25% possession against a Fiorentina that's been uh, really bad. We'll talk about them after. But one topic that I think they'll finally be happy about, I listened to Fabrizio Romano's podcast. Fabrizio Romano, Antonio, you know him? Of course. Yeah? Mm-hmm. He's one of the most reliable journalists. He says that he everything is telling him that Allegri will leave Juventus in June. And there's been other reports that Juventus are ready to absolutely tear Bologna apart. From Tiago Motta to Calafiori and to Zirgze, it seems like that's who Juventus is going to go with. So what's your guys' reaction? Obviously, I think we all agree on the Allegri part. But what do you guys make yeah. about uh, Juventus going for that trio at Bologna? Can they do well? Well, I... I uh Go ahead, Mike. You want to do it? Oh, yeah. Okay, I follow pa Fabrizio Romano all the time. He's one of my favorite, number one. I never met him personally, but uh, eventually we're going to meet. And Right? He right? right? didn't meet him in Milan? He has a restraining order. <laughs> no. Did I meet him? Uh, no. Uh, he didn't our meet schedules him? didn't meet. We're supposed to. I think he was avoiding you. But anyway, uh, um, as far as Zirste and uh, uh, Tiago Motta and uh, Calafiori, uh, I know Juventus, they're desperate. But uh, I think we need the Calafiori more than they need uh, the, that Juventus needs him. So uh, maybe I wanted to see what AC Milan. I think there's a lot of rumors about the Calcio Mercado right now. I won't buy anything that has been they've been saying about uh, the coaching and uh, and the players involved on uh, on the trading. Milan, but, uh, Milan, and Juventus both want both want Zirk said. Where would he fit more, Milan or Juve? Milan. Okay, Mike. W I mean, if you get Mota, Mota already has played with him, right? So. You can argue that would be Juve if he gets Mota. He knows him already. He doesn't have to do any trials with him. So, you so it would be whoever Mota with goes with. So I, I'm just saying it'll, it'll, it'll favor playing under Mota because he had that breakout season with him. So, yes. I feel like it would actually he would fit at Milan better. Obviously, Giroud leaving. They need a number. They need a striker. He's um, he's played as a number nine. He became a number nine because of Thiago Motta. He also he always thought that he needed a supporting striker. I feel like he would fit with you guys more, and, and you need him uh, a lot. Obviously, Juventus, I think they're making the absolute right decision with Thiago Motta. Juventus is no longer the team of the past that could go out and buy the best player of every team where they went and bought Iguain from Napoli and Pjanic from Roma, and let's deplete the competition and spend a lot of money. They have to build off young and when you want to build off youngsters, Max is not the coach, and Tiago Motta is. It's a gamble, but you need to take some time. You need to have a three, four, five-year project, and I think it'll pay off if uh, if they do all these things. If you go back to some of the previous podcasts that we had maybe a couple months ago, you guys are made, you signed off on a purely leaving AC Milan, and I said I wouldn't really put my money on what you guys are saying right now, and this is the reasons why I saw Ibrahimovic just. Uh, you know, having a, too much of a good relationship with Pioli and uh, valuing what he's actually doing up to now. And I guess we're gonna, they're going to be waiting for the next two, three weeks uh, whether uh, AC Milan goes far enough into the, the UEFA competition, League, yeah, yeah, in the Europa League. But, uh, you know, all of these uh, rumors and talks about uh, about the coaching, we're talking about a lot of money over here. We're mm -hmm. talking about people that have already been uh, tested on, on their job. We know there is a lot of happiness about Allegri uh, being coaching Juventus uh, and the style of uh, that Juventus has been playing under his leadership. But uh, I will not really put my money on anybody else uh, uh, right now because uh, what's out there, it's not, it's not uh, besides Tiago Motta and uh, a couple other, uh, you know, big names like uh, that Zerbian company, they're not, they're not rumored so far to move 100%, whether it's going to be Milan or Juventus or somebody else. So, mm -hmm. That then I would not put my money with all due respect for with uh, uh, our friend uh, Fabrizio Romano. Um, speaking about coaches, Napoli, Calzona, they scored four goals, they beat Monza, they really needed it. But it had a stat Napoli have the best attack in Serie A since Calzona has come into the club 15 goals in seven games. Mazzari had nine goals in 12 matches. Also, caveat, Osimen <laughs> came back from AFCON within that time frame. But for Napoli, they're, they're kind of, what well, you always say, sitting ducks. There's, there's nothing really left for them. I think all Napoli fans are kind of just like hoping for the season to end, try to finish as high up as possible, but there's been a rupture. And 
they're saying that De Laurentiis wants to keep Calzona as like the vice to any coach that comes in. He's still begging for Antonio Conte or Vincenzo Italiano, who, by the way, Italiano at Fiorentina these days, they're um, 2024. They have 10 points out of 36. Only Frosinone, Sassuolo, Salernitana have done worse, and they have no wins since February. Ugh. For if I was ideal, Conte is the Conte is the one to get. But if you had a bet money on it, it's it's not you looking like. Think Conte like, and De Laurentiis will get along? Never. No, but how good of content would be we be able to make every week with them? So you're not thinking about Napoli. You're thinking about just the content. No, I think he'll still make Napoli a, a Dude, team that, fight. That for, you don't going, think you don't think Conte won't make them fight for that the Scudetto? That is a toxic relationship if I have ever seen okay, one. Okay, but I'm saying strictly on performances, I think he'll help Napoli fight for the squid. You don't think so? Mm. Why not? I don't think he fits at all. So you don't think he'll perform well over there? Mm-mm. Conte will never I listen to ADL barking order over there from the top of if the If ADL's yeah, begging for him and Conte actually finds some agreement where you stay on your in your little office and you don't Dude, tell me how to do my job. Spalletti won them I the Scudetto for the it. first time in 33 years and De Laurenti still didn't listen. But Conte's a different co- a different caliber coach. I don't agree. Does that mean? What, what do you mean? Cal- what's the I don't agree that it would work. No. I don't right. think it'll work. I don't think their relationship will work, but I think his performances would work. Okay, Mike, first of all, it's not going to happen. I know. I'm just saying if. If. That is no if. I feel like Italiano is, is the, no the realistic and best option for them. Even he plays, Palad- a, Paladino, yeah, he Italiano. plays a very similar style to what they already want to achieve uh, formation-wise. And I think Vincenzo Italiano has done the maximum with Fiorentina at this point. Right now, the results are not correct. They're not where Fiorentina belong. But they're fighting in so many competitions that you're starting Hard. to see the team Just really struggle and he wants to play such an attacking football and when you have the defenders like that you, you get caught out Listen, if if the player of Napoli they embrace Calzona, Calzona, uh, let me just say, let me finish, Mike. Didn't say if they embrace his leadership and his style and his uh, his chemistry or his way of uh, dealing with the players and all the stuff. I think that my De Laurentiis might just uh, might just let him uh, let keep him Calzona. Go. Yeah, no, I don't think no. so. Yeah. Yeah, why? Why? I mean, they got a bigger chance of Conte taking over than Calzona staying. I don't know. I just don't see Conte uh, going to Napoli at all. Let us know in the comments. I give it 0.0000001. Reminds me of somebody. Yes, we get it. Yes, we understand. Inter win again. I would so. Davide Fratesi against Udinese. Crazy number. He's got five goals in Serie A. Three of them have come in the 90th minute, later than the 90th minute. Versus Milan, versus Verona, versus Udinese. And two of them were winners. These guys, even when they don't play great, no matter what, they just win. And I believe, the I mean, that goal was a hit off the post, and then it was a tap in. But whatever the case is, and their it's their year. Just like last year was Napoli's year, the year before was Milan's. Whatever, so, the, it's just their year. And right now, they need two more wins to mathematically secure the scudetto, and they're in party mode for the rest Anto, of the season. Are you? How bad? Uh, out of one, one to ten, how mad would you be if Inter wins a Scudetto against Milan in the Derby? The Derby, because that's what I could go to. I really don't give a shit. <laughs> don't lie. Say the I truth. I don't give a shit. Yeah, Say the right. truth. The Scudetto's been assigned already. Where Doesn't it's matter. Be? You're home. It's, it's in Milano. Milan's a home team. <laughs> for them to beat you. And they play Cagliari next, so that's... For them, to, for them to beat... Cagliari's on fire right now. I know. Ball, ball. They're going to get a tie. If they win, they're beat gonna Cagliari, get a tie. they're going to leave it to me. I, there's no... You want to... They're going to get a tie. No, they're because they want to win in the Derby. There's no way they're going to get less than three points. First that of all... All right, if I'm right... You got to wear uh, a Georgia jersey. No, nah, shut up. Oh, <laughs> Come on. Mike, Mike, you got to wear a Georgia jersey. That's an instigator, Mike. That's I'm giving you great right? odds. It's Inter against Cagliari. Okay. That. It's Inter against Cagliari. Yeah, first of all, you ask me a question. Okay, let me. I haven't finished my full answer to that. I said I don't give a shit, but, but I'm going to try to just fire up all the AC Milan fan. I know I have a, I have a, some follower uh, from, uh, from Milan and... Uh, and the rest of the metropolitan area nearby me. <laughs> <laughs> the tri-state <laughs> area. I wanted to say you guys have to go over there and spew venom. That game is very important. They're not going to win. They're not going to win. They're not Just to clarify, Antonio us. is not, not saying to be violent. Against us. No violence. No violence. You said we spew love venom. No, venom meaning con il tifo. You know, okay. we have to just... Uh, 
not silence those inter interfere. We have to just make sure that nobody knows that one of them is at the field. Okay, we have to just overtake everything. The loudness. You should be the, the MC the at San Siro. Oh my God! I wanted to meet the ultra with the, no the mic. Simon and ultra. Uh, they will uh, roast the you like a lamb on Greek Easter. They're gonna who? <laughs> if you met the Mr. ultras. Owl. Oh my God! I love the ultras of AC Milan. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. Uno di voi, not uno di noi. I am uno di voi. So. My goal is one day, Mike, we're going back uh, sometime soon. With you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one day, I want to meet the DC Milan Ultras. Can you guys make it happen? I know a couple guys that are part you of do? the club. Yeah. All right. I'm, just gonna get, I'm just going to get a tattoo on his <laughs> I, am, I, am. I am. Okay? I and am I'm going to do it live in front of Yo, them. You were supposed to get a tattoo when you won the school that You moment. never did it. I'm going to do the Let's tattoo when we get to the Seconda Stella. Okay. So it's never yeah, going to happen. Yeah, it's going to take some time. Uh, we just mentioned Cagliari. Cagliari came from behind to beat Atalanta. Great. They went up to 13th place. They're four points above relegation. Dilly ding, dilly dong. Claudio Ranieri consistently getting results. These guys were good as dead in the bottom of the table. And then out of nowhere... A nice little wing I don't like that. You get a nice little run. Why don't you like and that? And you're looking good. Oh, like you don't like Ranieri. Because you know what? No, Cagliari knocked out body. The last in, uh, 30 seconds. The last 30 seconds. What happened? All right, guys. Hold He's up. No, no, no I don't know. I don't yeah, remember. Pavoletti. What happened with George and Greece, Mike? <laughs> he said what it, not me. How did you guys lose? See, Over well, time. I get the blame when Yo. you blame when you bring it up. What was Yo. that? I don't you, remember. You know what? He's saying it, on you know, Thanks to Mike. I'm you know what? Thanks wait, to what happened with Georgia and Greece? Wait, thanks to Mike. I got a free tennis lessons because Mike, you know what? Uh, oh, tell the story. It's a good story. Uh, okay, it's a good story. My How, buddy, why get the blame when he My buddy Zurab is my hitting coach. He said to me, oh my God, Anto, my God, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous. I said, I said come and watch the game. Zurab is Georgian. No, 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 no. Oh, Zurab, by the way, is Georgian. And he's a big fan, of course, of Caras Velia. And he's telling me all the rumors of, that, of the Mercato, that some of the players from Georgia, they're under the radar of AC Milan. I said, I will be so happy. He said, because of that, said Zurab, I'm going to become an AC Milan fan just to support them. But get to the point. aside from that, he said, Anto, this is live. Yeah. This is... For, for real, if Georgia beats Greece, you're getting a free lesson. In other words, And the lessons Georgia. are expensive. Very expensive. I'm not going to say. Oh, I shouldn't say. I'll, I'll, I'll mute it. I'll mute it. I'll mute it. All right. Well, 90. But you know what? They're all worth it. They yeah. are all worth it. Zurab, to me, okay. is one of the best tennis coach in all New York. So okay. I'm not. So you got a free tennis lesson because Georgia did, beat Greece. I did. I want to give you three, I said. Oh, uh, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but you didn't go live. You didn't You didn't make any promise. I, but uh, I, I keep my promises. Yeah, yeah. I like some people. Promise. So wait, anyway. well, what's the thing? Why doesn't he like Kalyani? You see what he's doing? I don't know you what see, it is. You see what he, and you're blaming me. You see it, Mike. So you, is it because of Ranieri? So in Serie B playoffs last season, Bari was 30 seconds away from getting promoted to Serie A, and Pavel Goal ended up scoring the goal to pull Caleri through and put them in Serie A instead of Bari. And Bari's currently in the relegation zone in Serie B. Yeah, but you know, Bari should be coming up then, right? If they were so close to getting to Serie A. See this guy? No, wait, where, where are they? They're currently in the relegation playoffs in Serie B. Oh, that's got to be wrong. I think it can't Dean, be. I think Dean it can't be. If, they were, if, the, if you guys were seconds away from coming to Serie A this last year and just missed out Seriously? because Pavoletti this scored a goal. This is what people do. This is what miserable people do. And, uh, Dean, what did you do? Did you spike the, the, the martini, coffee martini? What do you call it? Espresso, Espresso martini. How do you not coffee remember? Martini. Guys, anything else? Uh, podcast? What do you mean anything else? Any Let's other talk, topics? Uh, yeah, but, uh, you are the topic maker over that's here. That's it. That's all my topics. Okay, I'm saying if I there's anything. anything else. Uh, mm. Yeah, we're talking about Roma. We're talking mm -hmm. about AC Milan. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Fiorentina. We're talking about Lazio. We're talking about the, the upcoming Juventus uh, Inter. Juventus Inter. Okay. Uh, That's it. We're talking about Cagliari. And, Guys, uh, reminder I mentioned the merch. We've got the hats mm. that are going to be ready for the Euros. They'll be in two weeks. The link to our email newsletter is in the top of the description right now. We also have these joggers that I'm wearing, sweatshirts that you could see in the back. So and head on hats. over to italianfootballtv.com and uh, cop some merch. Make sure you like, subscribe, rate us five stars. If you want the newsletter, what are you supposed to do? Top of the description. Top of the That's description. where Mike is going right now. That's why he's on his phone. Okay, Mike, what are you looking you go, for? That's Mike, right. can you, do, can you go on my phone? Mike, anything. hello, can you go on my phone and get me uh But I don't follow you guys on... Uh, <laughs> Lovely. Wow. Thanks. Guys, make sure you like, subscribe, follow, and we'll talk to you soon. Ciao, ragazzi. Ciao, guys. <laughs> and Forza Cagliari. <laughs>